Hello everyone. So this video will cover uh, setup and hold timing analysis. The, there are two reasons why we are introducing this particular topic over here. The first reason is obviously it's a basic VLSI frequently asked question in VLSI interviews. That is the first. That is the first reason. And the second reason is we want to understand the behavior of on chip variation that is OCV that we discussed some time back. So these are the two reasons that we are bringing this topic over here. So let's begin with the setup timing analysis. What we'll do is we'll take initially the ideal clocks. By ideal clock we mean that the clock tree is not yet built and then we'll do a timing analysis with the ideal clocks first to understand what are the basic structures and what are the basic parameters that we need to get used to and then we'll be introducing the real clocks and then doing the timing analysis again. Okay, so let's begin a, a setup timing analysis with ideal clocks. So and it's also a single clock. So there are scenarios where your launch flop is triggered by some, some clock and your capture flop is triggered by some other clock so let's now focus on a, a very basic and simple scenario of a single clock okay so this is the specifications we have the clock frequency is being given to us as one nanosecond or as one gigahertz so the clock period which is inverse of the clock frequency is one nanosecond so we have this launch flop which is sitting over here we have this capture flop which is sitting over here and we have this combinational logic which is between the launch and the capture flop and we have the clock network which is in, in this case it's the ideal clock network when ideal clock network we say we say that it's the clock tree is not yet built when the clock tree is built you will see a lot of buffers in this path but right now there is no the clock tree is not built yet so it's an ideal scenario Okay, and this is a typical scenario for identifying for, for a setup timing analysis and whole timing analysis. This scenario is a very typical scenario. So let's let's move on. F for example, we'll take this is the clock period of one nanosecond. This is your zeroth edge, and this is your one nanosecond edge. Okay, and this is the clock period from zero to t. Okay, so in a basic setup timing analysis, what happens is you send you send this particular edge to the launch flop okay and and the and the other rest to the capture flops but let, let's uh, try to graphic uh, uh, let's try to put it in a more graphical way and this particular edge at this particular time instant this uh, uh, the this particular edge reaches reaches the launch flop clock edge so let's put an arrow over here okay so this arrow on the time axis says that on the zeroth clock period on the zeroth time there is one clock edge which reaches to the launch flop okay and on this on the teeth time period which is at one nanosecond at t equal to one nanosecond the second edge the second the next the next edge just just to this one the second edge reaches the capture flop and this is let's put the arrow over here so whatever analysis we have to do we have to do between zero and t that is between between this in this particular area okay so with that said, let's assume that the combinational delay between the, that the combinational logic has got a delay of theta. Okay, and the setup timing analysis says that if for this particular combinational logic to work or for this particular circuit to work, your combinational delay, which is for, which is right from launch flop, the, the internal delay of the launch flop to and, and the combinational delay over here, that should be less than the time period. And it's pretty obvious because if the combinational delay, if the combinational delay which is present over here exceeds the time period, for example, it was t, t is equal to one nanosecond, and if your combinational delay is one point five nanosecond, for example, then your clock period has to be shifted to more right hand side. Your clock period will become one point five nanosecond, and your clock frequency will reduce from one gigahertz to one divided by one point five, roughly around seven hundred, eight hundred megahertz. And the reason is as you increase your time period your frequency decreases it's a inverse ratio over here okay so that that can't be allowed because the system has been designed to work at one nanosecond or at one gigahertz so any activity that is happening or any combinational delay between the launch and the capture should be happening within in a period which is less than one nanosecond that is in a period which is less than t okay so this is the first basic equation for setup time it's just that the combinational delay whatever you see over here should be less than your clock period that is t so this will this will this is this uh, condition is enough to to say that this system will work at 1 gigahertz but now we have to introduce more and more practical scenarios into this okay the first practical scenario is the flop itself so let's open up this particular flop 
when we open up this particular flop you see some um, some combinational circuit over here so this flop the box that you see over here it has got several mosfets it has got several logic gates inside it it's not just a black box there are a lot of gates inside it and there are a lot of resistances and capacitances which are present inside the capture flop so let's look into a more higher level thing of this particular flop that is a structure which is which consists of two mux so this is the mux one this is the mux 2 and the way a flop works the way a flop works it will be more clear from this particular timing graph so at, when when your clock is at zero when your clock is at zero okay your d input whatever it is present at the d input or whatever is present at the d input that reaches from this particular point till this particular pro point through this particular mux so there is a delay associated with with this particular transit of information so your information reaches uh, moves from d to qm and that takes an amount of delay which is equal to the delay of this mux one because this mux one is again built on various resistances mosfets pmos and mos and everything okay so there is a finite delay that it takes for the d input to reach from this point to this point and all this happens when your clock is equal to zero when a clock is equal to zero and in this case when a clock is equal to zero the output just the output is fed back to the to the input of the mux and that is being driven so basically output is not moved your output is doesn't changes when does the change exactly happens when your clock switches from logic zero to logic one so when your clock switches from logic zero to logic one you see a logic one over here when you say logic one the output of this particular mux is now fed back to its input and the, the this particular data just rotates over here but over here when you when you feed a logic one your qm the data which is present at qm moves from qm to q so again there is a second delay that is associated over here so there is a mux 2 delay that that it takes to reach from this point to this point okay but the point is why are we even looking into this what 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 all this thing will impact our setup setup timing so that ex that's exactly the point so the point is the mux 1 delay or the mux 2 delay when you when when there is a clock when there is a logic 0 on the clock or logic 1 in the clock that will actually affect or that will actually restrict your combinational delay requirement so initially we have seen that the combinational delay theta was supposed to be less than t but now it will now things will change why things will change let's let's see over here so when you see there is an edge that is coming over here for example let's a uh, capture flop clock edge okay so when the when the edge at, at the t clock period reaches at the clock port the capture flop knows that it will need some finite amount of time for input that is coming at d to to bring it somewhere at the center of the flop to bring it somewhere over here okay so the cop capture flop is aware of that it, it is aware that it will need some finite amount of time which is mux 1 which is a delay of mux 1 for whatever input which comes at d to, to settle it properly at the center so as a result of that that amount of time has to be subtracted from the complete clock period t so initially if the complete clock period t was available we'll bring it over here initially if the complete time period t was available for 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 combinational delay to settle now the time period gets reduced because there is some amount of time before t that is needed by the capture flop for the input which is present over here to settle at the center of the flop which is the mux1 delay so that is the mux1 delay and that mux1 delay is referred to as setup time is referred to as setup time which is mentioned over here so let's put some setup time so there is some finite amount of time which is required for the d input to settle from this point to the center of the flop and that amount of time is referred to as setup time so now your clock so 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 if you if your if the combinational delay is lies somewhere between bit, at this particular point basically somewhere before this one so the capture flop has got enough time to bring the data which is present at this point which is present at the d pin to the center of the flop it has got enough time it has got that is basically is called as the setup time it's called the the flop setup time so now your equation changes to the commercial delay requirement now comes it, initially it was commercial delay should be less than t now it should be less than t minus s it should be less than t minus s where s is the amount of time required by the capture flop to settle the information which is present at d somewhere at the center of the flop which is the mux1 delay 
okay so this is the this is the, so we have brought one more practical scenario over here so le let's take an example for example if t was 1 nanosecond and let's say it, it it takes only 10 picosecond of delay let's say this we are at a very advanced node and the capture flop takes only 10 picoseconds so your commercial delay should be less than 1 nanosecond minus 0 0.1 nano 0 0.01 nanosecond which is 0 0.99 nanoseconds so commercial delay should be less than 0 0.99 nanosecond this will ensure that your system will definitely work at 1 gigahertz okay so this was the first level of uh, practical scenario that we brought into the picture there are more levels of practical scenario that will be coming into the picture but since i'm already running out of time let's try to bring uh, bring all those practical scenarios in the next video thank you